Um, yeah. One of the one of the fights that happened before though the this crisis uh, came about, the pandemic came about, was Fury versus Wilder. I mean, a fight that you clearly have a vested interest in the outcome. What, what was your reaction to seeing Tyson Fury stop Deontay Wilder like that? Look, I can say a lot of things, but I'm only going to speak facts on the situation. You know, uh, Wilder's had, I think, 10 title defenses with that WBC belt. So I look across the 10 title defenses that he's had, you know, and I say, okay, he's for um, Spilkar, he fought the, the big guy, what's his name, uh, early on in his career. Uh, Brazil, or no, that was... No, uh... Brazil, Dorfa. Yeah. So he's fought um, Stuttgart, Brazil, Dorfa, he fought the main Vern Um he's fought Ortiz twice. Ortiz twice, yeah. He's fought Fury twice, and I think he fought Chris Ariola or Molina. Uh, Ariola, because Ariola beat Seth Mitchell that time, yeah. So Ariola. So within those ten, right? I looked at and I said, okay, cool. We have Tyson Fury twice, Ortiz twice, and then all, and they're the top tier fighters in his ten defenses, and all, all of those, you know, four challenges that he's had, which are top tier fighters, he struggled with. Mm. So I thought, yeah, of course, Fury's gonna come back. He come back off a long layoff, you know, and I thought he will come back again and, and get it right. I, I know what it take, I know what it means to come so close and have it stripped away. So. I just thought Tyson Fury would do exactly what he would do. Tactically wise, I could break that down, but in terms of how he went about it, I just believe that when Deontay Wilder gets to top tier level, um, it's going to be difficult for him to stay there due to the fact that he had so long um, bubbling around mediocre fights. That is Anthony Joshua talking about the fight that happened on February 22nd, 2020, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder for the WBC and Ring Magazine Heavyweight Championships where Tyson Fury was able to stop Deontay Wilder in the seventh round to win those WBC and Ring Magazine Heavyweight Championships. And Anthony Joshua talks about the resume of Deontay Wilder while he was WBC Heavyweight Champion. Um, you know, for me, going through the timeline, you had Deontay Wilder winning the WBC Heavyweight Championship over Vermont Severn in a 12-round decision. Then he makes uh, defenses against Eric Molina, Johan Duopa, Archer Spilka, then Chris Ariola gets hurt, Gerald Washington, then fights Vermont Severn again. Then he has his fight with Luis Ortiz. Tyson Fury, Dominic Brazil, Luis Ortiz again, and then Tyson Fury uh, on February 22nd. And, you know, Anthony Joshua goes through that particular resume and says that, you know, that isn't, you know, all too impressive up until the point where Wilder fights Luis Ortiz and Tyson Fury. A lot of people put Luis Ortiz in the top five in the heavyweight division, and you had Tyson Fury, who was the unified heavyweight champion before he ended up uh, retiring, um, and then being on the layoff for you know about two years plus uh, before he comes back into the ring, and then has his uh, first fight with Deontay Wilder on December first, two thousand and eighteen, which ended up in a draw, and. Now, you have it to where um, Deontay Wilder, after that particular fight, fought Dominic Brazil, had the first round knockout. Then fought Luis Ortiz, had the um, you know knockout there in the round seven, I think it was. And then he fights Tyson Fury again, who was pretty much all the way back, and he gets blown out. And I think the point that was made there was that, you know, once Deontay Wilder fought someone that was, you know, highly skilled and at the top of their game, that Deontay Wilder was going to have issues. And that's exactly what basically happened. But kind of like pointed this out in reference to Deontay Wilder is that even in those fights that he's had while he was a WBC champion, he's had issues with either guys that move their head or guys that are around his height or taller, okay? 
So you had the thing there with Eric Molina where he got, you know, stunned a little bit. Uh, you had the fight with Johan Duopa where he ended up getting cut um, and had to basically work in order to stop Johan Duopa in that particular fight. Then you had um, Archer Spilka where Archer Spilka kind of like moved, moved his head a lot and kind of like made Deontay Wilder uh, not really judge his range that well uh, before he was able to, you know, get himself um, calmed down and then set up Archer Spilka uh, for that knockout that he had. Um, and then you had the whole thing with Luis Ortiz um, and then Tyson Fury, who taller than Deontay Wilder and knows how to move, move his head, as you've seen in the first fight, because every time that Tyson Fury kind of saw the left hand coming, he knew that the right hand was coming down, so he would duck a lot. So, um, in reference to that, that is why in the second fight, Tyson Fury kind of like knew what Deontay Wilder's habits were and kind of like took advantage of Deontay Wilder uh, trying to fight on his front foot and s tried to see what he could do on his back foot, which wasn't really much. And that's how Tyson Fury was able to stalk him and then beat him down, beat him down, beat him down until he got that seventh round stoppage with the towel being thrown in. Uh, but the thing about what Anthony Joshua said in reference to that, I pretty much agree with because I have critiqued the resume of Deontay Wilder while he was the WBC heavyweight champion and saw that he really didn't face a lot of guys that were highly ranked in the heavyweight division until 2018, starting with Luis Ortiz and then Tyson Fury, and then following that up with another match with Luis Ortiz, and then now Tyson Fury, February 22nd, and we see what happens. So, um... That's what I got in reference to this particular topic. You can subscribe to The Boxing Source here on YouTube or catch The Boxing Source radio show live Sunday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Blog Talk Radio. Or you could catch that podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor.fm, or whatever your favorite podcast app is. On that note, folks, I'm out. Peace.